hey guys okay today we'll be talking about the femoral sheath what actually the femoral sheath is so the fascia which is lining the abdomen will be prolonged into the thigh and encloses the upper 3.75 cm of the femoral vessels forming the femoral sheath so what are the fascia present uh, that is covering the muscles of the abdominal wall that with the anterior abdomen and posterior abdominal wall will be extended into the thigh and that will be covering the uh, upper 3.75 centimeters of this femoral vessels which is nothing but this femoral sheath now this femoral sheath is some funnel shaped like this if you see it is a funnel shaped sheath which encloses the upper uh, few part of this femoral vessels uh, the base of the sheath uh, is directed upward towards this abdominal cavity and the apex now this is called apex will be merging with the tunica adventitia of this vessels so how is this formed so let us see what are actually present in this femoral sheath it will be having a femoral artery a femoral vein and the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve genitofemoral nerve if you see this femoral sheath this is not symmetric so this lateral side it will be having a vertical um, sheath and on the medial side you'll find an oblique place a sheet therefore this femoral sheet is not symmetric in nature it is not symmetric now um, this how this uh, femoral sheet is formed it is derived anteriorly from the fascia transversalis covering the transverse abdominis muscle and posteriorly by the fascia iliaca the fascia covering the iliacus muscle and inferiorly it blends with the tunica adventitia and finally disappears so see this is a formation this is a fascia transversalis the inguinal ligament which is a lower thickening of the external oblique muscle and this is the fascia iliaca both of them forms this femoral sheath it is not symmetrical it is not symmetrical so see this is fascia iliaca covering the iliacus muscle fascia transversalis covering the transverse abdominis muscle this is a femoral sheath which encloses the femoral artery femoral v femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve now coming to the compartment this femoral sheath is divided into three compartments by two atrio sorry antero posterior septa by two antero posterior septa is divided into the three compartments from lateral to the medial we call it as a lateral a lateral compartment which accommodates a femoral artery femoral branch of genito femoral nerve and this intermediate um, compartment which uh, have only the femoral vein and the medial one the most uh, smallest and emptiest compartment which encloses only a single lymph node namely the lymph node of clucket this uh, the medial most compartment which is smallest and empty of the femoral sheath is called the femoral canal very very important let me repeat it once again for you the medial most compartment of the femoral sheath which is smallest and empty that uh, contains the lymph node of clocket or rosenmuller's uh, lymph node is called the femoral canal is called the femoral canal um, this femoral canal uh, if you see here oh wait so this is called the femoral canal this entire thing is called the femoral canal it's a short facial tube whose width decreases as it goes and if you see here so it will be having a uniform thick i mean uniform breadth uniform breadth but here as it is going down it is getting closed inferiorly it get closed by fusing with its wall by fusing with its wall it gets closed later the upper end of the femoral canal so this is when you see from top uh, when you are looking it from upside from up view so you could see like this this is enclosed by a areolar tissue called the femoral septa this alone what i have presented here is the areolar tissue that is covering this femoral canal like this that is called the femoral septa uh, what is the importance of this femoral canal and why why it is the medial most empty space the smallest space for so what for it is present actually uh, medial to this will be having the femoral vein in the increased venous return it enlarges it enlarges so therefore it provides the 
dead space for enlargement of the femoral vein in increased venous return in increased venous return it act as a dead space okay yeah it will be accommodating the lymph node of clocked as usual we know and now what are the boundaries of the femoral ring boundaries of the femoral ring so this is the femoral ring you consider of when you are looking from the top view medially will be having a sharp uh, a uh, lacunar ligament laterally will be having the femoral vein and anteriorly the inguinal ligament and posteriorly will be having the pectin pubis these are the boundaries of the femoral ring boundaries of the femoral ring now coming uh, it is present below the inguinal ligament we have seen here below the inguinal ligament posterior to the uh, saphenous opening and cribri from fascia and is present in front of the fascia covering the pectineus uh, in front of the fascia covering the pectineus if you recall a point which i have told in the saphenous opening is um i've just told like if you consider this as a saphenous opening um this is the infralateral border this is present in front of the femoral sheath and the medial border is present behind the femoral sheath so this medial border which is present behind the femoral sheath so that uh, fem part of the femoral sheath will be having this uh, femoral ring that is why it, here it is told it is present posterior to the saphenous opening and the cribriform fascia and in front of the fascia covering the pectineus fascia covering the pectineus okay guys this is all about the femoral sheath canal and ring now coming to the clinical aspect of this is nothing but the femoral hernia femoral hernia a protrusion of the abdominal contents into the femoral canal this protrusion like this into the femoral canal is called this um, femoral hernia we could see a globular swelling in the grayon region uh, that is infrolateral to the pubic tubercle infrolateral to the pubic tubercle below the inguinal ligament so if you consider this as the pubic tubercle and uh, this as the inguinal element let me consider please don't consider this colors and it is present um, inferolateral inferiorly laterally below the inguinal ligament you can find a globular swelling like this called the femoral hernia femoral hernia so femoral ring is actually the site of potential weakness of the grayon therefore when the femoral ring is enlarged actually it is a site of potential weakness therefore it is often enlarged why so it is enlarged is due to the distension of it is distended with the weakness of the abdominal muscles so with age or pregnancy or forceful coughing which increases the intra abdominal pressure and that causes the weakness of the abdominal muscles causes the distension or the enlargement of the femoral ring so it is acting as a site of potential weakness for protrusion of the intestinal contents into the femoral ring causing the femoral causing the femoral hernia and this femoral hernia is most commonly seen in female because they'll be having a larger or the wider i mean a big femoral ring because of the wider pelvis because of the wider pelvis okay guys this is all about uh, the femoral sheath canal ring and the applied aspect about it if you like my videos please